Welcome to Electum Online. As we have seen in the previous videos, terrestrial planets are very rare. But then having a terrestrial planet in the correct location makes it even more rare. Because if you're too close to the star, it's too hot. If you're too far away from the, from the star, then it's too cold. You need to be in what we call the Goldilocks zone, not too hot and not too cold. And so it turns out when we look at our own solar system, we can see that by the time you get to the orbit of Venus, it tends to be too hot, and when you get to the orbit of Mars, it tends to be too cold. Why is that? Well, if we consider the Earth receiving 100% of the sunlight, well then Venus receives about twice as much sunlight per square meter, and Mars only receives about 40% of the sunlight per square meter. So you can see that if you go much, much further out, the amount of sunlight you get is far less, and over here, the amount of sunlight you get is far greater. It would be way too hot and way too cold. Now, Venus is a planet that is almost the same size as the Earth, and yet it is now blistering hot. Temperatures reach as much as close to 400 degrees Celsius on Venus. And the reason for that is because being close to the sun, the oceans were, weren't able to remain there, they got boiled away, and because of the atmosphere that was left after that happened, it trapped so much of the heat that it got enormously hot on Venus, so life is no longer possible on Venus. Mars, on the other hand, if it had been larger, may still have had liquid oceans, although the temperatures on Mars tend to be below freezing for most of the year in almost all regions of Mars, and only at the equator during the summertime could you have temperatures that are above freezing, just mildly so, and so you can see that even though it is relatively close to the Earth and it still receives 40% of the sunlight that the Earth does, it's already getting to the point where we may say even if it was large enough, it may not have been warm enough for life to exist on Mars. But of course, now that it's too small, the atmosphere is gone and there's no oceans left, no running water left on the surface of Mars, life is now virtually impossible and we have tried to find some but we have found no remnants of life being there today or no remnants of life ever ever having been on the surface of the planet of course we can't give up on that yet but so far we haven't been able to figure it out yet or to find it so again in order for life to exist the planet needs to be in a very narrow region in orbit around the star all the gas planets are way too far away. If there were terrestrial planets, life could not exist there. Where we have the asteroid belt, again, it's too far away, too cold, life could not exist there. And Mercury is too close to the sun. Temperatures in the daytime are absolutely enormous. You couldn't live there because it's just simply too hot. So you can see, again, even though terrestrial planets are rare, finding one in the Gold Goldilocks zone is even much more rare. And again, that is the miracle of life on Earth, the fact that the Earth is the right size and right in that Goldilocks zone makes it a good planet for life.